forming quadratics is a wonderful task that we highly recommend that we use in the classroom. This is from Math Shell website, and the PowerPoint will have the link to the website. Forming quadratics has been included in the framework tasks that have been updated, as I've already mentioned. Just again, as a reminder, if you ever wonder about what, it, you know, what does the standard look like in a classroom, what should we really do to teach it, frameworks is a great place to look. So like I said, this, this task is mentioned in the framework, in the frameworks that are updated, great task, and we're gonna look at that and look at the standards that the task addresses. SSE standard representing expressions in equivalent forms, which includes factoring and things like that. IF standards analyzing functions and key features of functions, also represented in different ways and analyzing various key features of graphs. All of these standards are addre addressed in forming quadratics. And guess what, it's not a worksheet, it's a really good activity engaging. Students love this because they match cards and, and this is a great time to assess your students to conduct the formative assessment lesson to see where their students are. The way the task is set up as other formative assessment lessons is we start with pre-assessment. After matching, after, after addressing misconceptions, we should probably move on to the whole class discussion. When the teacher posts maybe something like this on the board and talks about the different forms of representing quadratic functions. And I would like, though, to go over these three examples with you before we do the collaboration activity. So these are three different forms to represent a quadratic function. What would you say is the benefit of this particular form, the standard form? What kind of, what kind of feature of a quadratic function is easy to identify from the standard form? Sally? Y-intercept. Y-intercept. <laughs> Which is what in this particular case? Zero twenty-four. And how did you get that? If I substitute in zero for x, then y is twenty-four. Why did you substitute zero for x? Because because I wanted to find out where it crossed this way. Which is the meaning of the y-intercept. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. What about the second equation? What key feature of graph quadratic functions would be easy to identify? from this particular form. Jen? Your x-intercepts. x-intercept. Which would be what? Uh, four and six. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna, how many are you gonna have? You're gonna have two. two. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be zero, four zero. And six zero. Very good. So this is a good time to talk to our students about the vocabulary, right? So Jen, you mentioned x-intercepts. What's another way to call this? The zeros. Zeros of a function. Mm -hmm. So 
solutions. Solutions, perfect. Roots. Right. Roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a great opportunity to bring everything together and to talk about the multiple ways to explain this. All right. What about the next one? shows your vertex, vertex. vertex. And, and your transformations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this is vertex form, mm -hmm. or we can call it completed square form, right? So you can identify the vertex, which would be what, Carrie? Five, negative one. Five, negative one. Although I think our students will have the misconception negative of negative five, five, negative one. Negative five, negative one. So how would we address that misconception? Well, hopefully you would not have done this <laughs> until after you have discussed uh -huh. the transformations of, you know, horizontal shifting is, is going to go opposite of whatever the sign right. is in that, in that parentheses. Mm -hmm. So transformations would be helpful. This is really good. When, by the way, what do you notice about all three of them? Do they have anything in common? Aren't they all the same? They're all what do you mean? Well, in their different forms. Of, of the same exact equation. quadratic function. Of the same exact quadratic function. So then we could go back and forth between them, right? And look at, okay, where does negative four, negative six come from? Can we factor this expression maybe to get this? All right. And then what about this one? Could we even find the vertex from the standard form and then check the vertex form? Or better yet, could we complete the square and convert from standard to vertex. Could we go from this form to this form by simply what? Multiplication. Multiplying binomials. So this shows us relationships between various forms of quadratic curves. The relationships is a very big word here, I believe. Because we're not, this is the depth of knowledge level that, that just goes up <laughs> significantly because we're comparing, contrasting, we're going back and forth. We're deciding, we're generating strategies to use to analyze a given situation. This is really, really, really good activity.